hello again. So the artillery Luger holster and its set up its rig assembly. Now, apart from the obvious difference that a artillery Luger holster is longer than a normal four inch P8 Luger holster, there are some differences in the the design of the piece as well. I mean, and a regular four inch Luger holster, it kind of looks similar in set out, but where your normal four inch Luger holster has the strap, a buckle, you take down tool pouch, your spare mag pouch and loops so it can be worn on the belt. The artillery Luger does not have any provision to be worn on the belt, it has no belt loops. Um, in an artillery Luger setup, the holster and the board stock work in conjunction with each other. They're kind of one piece, as it were. So the artillery Luger holster has the strap going in the opposite direction through a keeper, and you think, well, where's the, where's the button at for that hole? We'll get to it in a minute. On the side, in place of the spare mag holder, you have this long pouch for a T-shaped cleaning rod. And on the inside, you have your regular takedown tool pouch. This holster's made by Julius Arnaid Moyes, 1918. It's maker marked and coded there. On the back, oops, on the back, which you can't really see, in place of belt loops, which they never had belt loops, there's two small loops, and the way it all holds together is dependent entirely on the single strap, shoulder strap. Um, the shoulder strap is one continuous piece of leather with these adjusting holes on it, and both ends of the shoulder strap, they pass through two small loops on the back of the holster, they pass through two holes in the board stock, they go back on themselves, go back through an additional two holes, come back through and are kind of held together by this push button assembly, as you can see there. So that holds the holster to the board stock. Attached to the board stock is this extra bit of leather with this button assembly on it. That is the piece that passes over the top of the flap of the holster and this piece goes through there. It's actually shrunk so it's not going to close properly but when this was full length before it shrunk it would, the hole on that would engage with the top of that and that, that's what kept the holster flap fastened. Now because the uh, clearing rod is in this side where you would have a spare mag pouch, the artillery Luger setup has an additional double pouch on the shoulder strap in which are kept two regular magazines. Now, on the bottom of the stock, there's an additional leather fixing, which is screwed on the back, and it's basically a loop of leather where the bottom of the holster pushes into, and then you have this additional piece of leather, which buttons in there. Attached to that is a protective cup. That protective cup goes over the fitment which connects with the back of the gun and what it does is it keeps dirt and grime out the fixing and it stops this little lever from dropping out. Now when you see artillery lugers being fired on YouTube you normally see them being fired without the holster in place. Uh, people are actually firing them wrong. They were, they were never meant to be fired by just using the board stock. 
the holster is an integral part of supporting the weapon when it's used as a carbine because you'll notice that when the board stock is fastened together with the holster the board stock is lower than the top of the holster so that when the whole thing is offered up against the firer's arm it's the flap of the holster that acts as the recoil buffer for the shoulder stock that becomes the shoulder stock you see? see see the difference so that bit there was never meant to go up against the firer's armpit it's that bit there that acts as the padding and also incidentally the shoulder strap when the gun's being fired also acts as a as a lanyard for the gun so the method of attaching your artillery luger is via this uh, machine section on the back it kind of when you do this bit you have your little lever there it merely goes up kind of real fashion and your little push button goes up and holds it in place and that's how it's held on although this this push button thing is a little bit fiddly because on the back of the gun you have a kind of little a little indentation on the top of the rail now that indentation uh, connects with a a D section part on on the inside of this if I, if I pull this if I can get it out if I can get it out he says is it going to come out normally it just drops out wait will it come out will it come out yes it will come out you see when when this this is the vital part that goes in there to hold the gun onto the stock when it's not being used you see how it's a D section with a flat bit there when it's in the open position the D section is against the back of that stop there so that so the the stock just slides off when the stocks put on the gun this is put in the up position and that D section goes into that tiny recess there and that's what holds it to the gun that's the only locking mechanism that holds it to the gun and then of course when you want the gun off you, you turn this down again so it goes from D section to flat bit and it makes it loose then when you want the stock back on you lock it up again and it engages really fiddly piece and they do often drop out so if, so if you're buying a a board stock make sure there's actually something in there because it does have a tendency to drop out um, the artillery luger um, this one's made by DWM 1917 was a kind of modification of the regular four inch barrel luger it, uh, it has something that makes it an artillery luger apart from the barrel it's got this long range tangent foresight um, the oh, rear sight actually foresight there rear sight there um, these came out in 1917 by DWM it's fitted with a 192mm barrel and a special tangent leaf rear sight it's graduated to 800 meters. other than that the gun's identical with a standard PO8. See, so from, from there backwards, it's a standard PO8. In fact, when DWM stopped making artillery Lugers and went over to four inch Lugers, they continued making this part of the gun with the board stock attachment because they couldn't be bothered redesigning the machinery. So it is quite possible that you'll have a four inch barrel Luger 
that isn't an artillery Luger with the board stock attachment on it. That doesn't mean it was meant to be attached to a board stock. It just means DWM continue production of that to make regular Lugers. But to make it an artillery Luger, it needs to have a tangent sight and the long barrel. And this one, it's got the entwined DWM letters there. On there, it will be 1917 dated, but as part of the deactivation, it's had a pin let into it, it's been drilled, then it's been ground over, which has obliterated the date. In normal use, it takes the normal eight round mag and does cock and dry fire. A uh, feature about the Luger is, it's got this little switch here. When you pull the switch down, it reveals the word Geistgehört, which is safe. When that lever is pulled down, it pushes up a tiny piece of metal there. Watch that, see that? Pushes up a tiny piece of metal. That acts as a stop, which prevents the gun being fired, or it stops it from being loaded. When the lever is put in the fire position, it pulls the stop down and the gun can be so that's the ins and outs of the artillery Luger the board stock the spare mag pouch shoulder strap and holster now a little bit later on the gun was available with this this is a a 37 round a 32 round rather drum magazine um complicated to use difficult to fill this is a battlefield relic and i'll tell you why it's basically just a it's basically just a kind of regular magazine with additional space for other rounds and the method of filling it was really awkward. This section here rotated outwards to form a lever and then you pull this lever all the way down to this position here. That there is a safety push button. When this mechanism was round here, that push button would push into that hole. That would hold the spring in place until you manually loaded using the tool, all the rounds of ammunition, all the rounds of ammunition had to go in through the top. This didn't open. And it's basically got two springs in it. It's got a clockwork spring in there and a regular magazine spring in there. So that when this is wound round to that position there and it's full, as the gun fires, the spring unwinds, it goes click, click, click all the way down back to this position and then the regular magazine spring takes over and pushes the rest of the ammunition out. So when this gets empty, that stops. And then the, the regular mag spring takes over and pushes the rest out. And this one, because of its condition, is a battlefield relic from the, the Argon Forest Battle of 1918. And um, this was one of four that were found in a wooden box about three or four years ago. And the Argon Battle Campaign was a huge pitch battle between the Germans and the US Marine Corps. Uh, the US Marines had so many casualties that their casualty list would not be matched again like that until the 1944 invasion of Iwo Jima. So that's something to think about. They had a huge casualty loss. This one's been partially repaired using body filler and things like that, but it is a fairly, a fairly robust relic. Now you can't, when the mag is in the gun, it's not really intended to be issued when the artillery Luger first came out. This is kind of a later addition because originally the artillery Luger was come out was meant to be for artillery crews, machine gun crews, and crews of of big weapons where you needed a personal protective sidearm 
and that's why the artillery Luger came out it gave them the additional benefit of having a carbine without them actually needing to use a rifle um, but later on these came out and the idea of these were they were to be issued with artillery Lugers to infantry so that stormtroopers in a battalion could have some heavy firepower so in effect an artillery Luger with one of these becomes the first assault gun as it were um, the same mag would later be used in the MP18 submachine gun and to kind of set it up my little things fall out again you have that in there and that gets offered to there and that would originally that would go straight up to secure it on properly but the the actual secure and things a bit worn so it only goes partially up and you can either put the regular magazine in or you can put your 32 round drum mag in. Oops, there's it. and it makes for quite a nice little setup so it does look really good now I'm gonna take this off off its tripod and we'll take a look at it so set up if it'll stay together set up it makes for a pretty impressive piece of kit and as I say that's the shoulder strap with the spare mag pouch and as you can see when it's when it's offered up against the fire's shoulder the distance between the back of the board stock and the top of the holster so that becomes the shoulder stock when it's in the carbine mode that's a fairly nice piece of kit and if we compare it to this this Luger here if I can get it out the holster with one hand that's the problem with Luger holsters you see Luger holsters are a pain in the ass because when, when the guns in the holster there's no provision to actually get hold of the gun you've got this stupid little pull tab which is a long piece of leather that goes around the bottom of the gun and when you pull the pull tab it, it pushes the gun out of the holster which is bloody difficult to do hold on a second when I put this down just take a look at the frame. There we go. Yeah, Luger holsters, they fit you with like an internal mechanism whereby when you pull when you pull that, it pulls it pulls a piece of leather which pushes the gun out so it offers it up to your hand. Anyway, this is a, a DWM 1914 Luger and you can see the difference in length. Other than that, it's just exactly the same gun. Now this DWM1 doesn't have the back strap on it because it's an earlier model. That's 1917, that's 1914. But if that was 1917 dated DWM, it would have the same attachment for the shoulder stock on it. But this one doesn't. So if you've got a four inch barrel with a, with a shoulder stock attachment on it, doesn't mean it was meant to have a shoulder stock on it. It's just that after DWM finished production of them, they retained the back half of the gun and just made regular four inch Luger holster, Lugers out of them. But prior to that, they actually made four inch Lugers anyway. So you can get artillery Lugers by DWM, you can get regular four inch Lugers by DWM, and then after 1917, you can get four inch Lugers by DWM that have the attachment on for putting the shoulder stock. So that's a look at my artillery Luger. Um, I think 
might have a couple of different I do yeah a couple of differences in magazines I mean you can you can find the magazines that's got PO8 stamped into it there it's got an alloy bottom serial number on it this one doesn't have PO8 on it and it's got a wooden base plate you can have them with plastic base plates so Luger magazines are kind of collectors pieces in their own right now they're fairly expensive to buy as separate items and um, that's got another alloy one in it um, so yeah it's quite a nice little setup you know as you can see it does look fairly impressive but the drum mags were prone to damage they were difficult to fill in the field if you didn't have the filling tool so most of them were really never used and uh, I think that is pretty much that so that's my 1917 DWM artillery Luger drum magazine shoulder stock holster uh, shoulder strap spare mag pouch and have a look at the inside the makers details Julius Arnard Moyes 1918 if we come down here we can see how it fits how it goes in there to lock it properly that should be up here to unlock it that should pull down and then you can't slide the shoulder stock off with the snail drum mag in place because it protrudes out of it so you'd have to remove the snail drum mag before you get that out but with the regular mag in place it doesn't obstruct the taking off or putting on of the shoulder stock so most of these by artillery crews would be used with the regular um, magazine in situ as I said these were issued to us as, as a separate entity to assault troops so that's my artillery Luger setup and you know Lugers are quite nice they're very almost art deco in in shape I mean if I can get off they, they do sit really really nice in the hand they do, they do sit really comfortably one thing I like about about Lugers they're more like an art deco piece of furniture than a weapon but really nice setup uh, price now oh god I wouldn't have a clue um, the last time I saw a deactivated Luger was quite a few years ago it was like £1800 um, I saw on eBay the other day a replica MGC snail drum mag from the 1970s um, this was you know in the years before Denix there was a company in America called MGC knocking out metal replica guns and the, the uh, drum mag I saw on eBay was 1968 dated and it was an MGC repro and it sold for nearly £300 to somebody who wanted a drum mag um, which was ridiculous and the week later somebody else put one on at uh, £300 nobody bought it and I think it's currently is restarted the price at about £200 I mean board stocks can be found anywhere sometimes they'll be regimentally marked sometimes not um, for for a, a holster um, you're looking at maybe 300 quid for an artillery holster but if you don't have the board stock and you don't have the strap work you're not going to get it to sit on a belt because as I've said it has no belt loops an artillery Luger holster was never meant to be worn on a belt so 
so quite a nice setup and as you can see it does it does kind of overbalance the gun to one side because you kind of that, that's the center line of the gun but that drum mag kind of sticks out to there center of the gun that's kind of where the drum mags are and as I've said in 1918 when the Bergman MP18 came out that magazine could be used on it Bye for now.